Welcome to LNP Renewable System Editor. Today we are going to see some of the basics of VFTs, especially VFTs that we are using in the marine industry, that is, especially in the ships. So, what are the things that we are going to discuss today? What is a VFT? Okay, why should we know about this VFT and why we are using it? And what are the components inside the VFT? How a VFT works, okay, and how a IGBT module looks like, okay. What is a brake circuit, okay, how it looks like. And how a control circuit of VFD looks like. Okay. Say for example, if a high temperature problem is occurring, what will be the cause and what is the action that we need that we need to take? And if any under voltage problem or over voltage problem is occurring, what will be the cause of it? And what is the action that we need to take when we are making any sort of troubleshooting with the VFTs? Apart from it, even for the overcurrenting issues also, if you know the cause, then we can find out the actions required for it. Apart from it, there are some um statist, static checks that we need to do in our vfts whenever we are going to commission the vft and in the same time if any fault occurs if the vfd is not working then immediately uh, these are the statistics that we need to make to check the healthiness of the vfts okay so as we know earlier with uh, through the plc's <coughs> uh, uh, these uh, variable frequency drives especially need a separate power supply for its running apart from it it, it has a two features one is the uh, controlling feature and the other one is the monitoring features also okay the monitoring through the feedback we can take so the controlling for the controlling and the monitoring we can to use either current or a uh, voltage current can be from 4 to 20 milliamps voltage can be from uh, 2 to 10 volt okay same way for the feedback signal also either as a current we can take 4 to 20 milliamps or sometimes uh, as a voltage 0 to 10 volt we can take okay so variable frequency drive is widely used for operating all the ac drives on the onboard ships okay there are so many different ratings are available based on the motor that we are going to use in the ships okay so why we need to use this variable frequency drive it has a variable speed and the integrated functionality so with the help of it uh, from the push button from the switches from the plc's okay and even with the help of the speed control knobs we can change the speed of the ac drive or the motor that we are running and most importantly the power factor issue so if we connect the uh, motors directly they have a very poor power factors so if we connect the motor through these variable frequency drives since it has so many you know capacitors inside it so it will, it will try to um, you know improve and eliminate the power factor correction issues inside the vfds next thing is that uh, we can reduce the mechanical stresses also because if you are for a uh, apart from the uh, vfds if you are using the gearboxes for the speed control of the motors okay um, this vfd is a better mentor and most importantly um, when we connect uh, uh, our motors directly with the voltages, okay, line voltages, what will happen uh, during the starting time, uh, you know, the startup current will be more, so it will be, uh, since it has some more windings in it, the current will be maximum, there is a possibility for the windings to get damaged. So, in order to reduce it, with the help of this variable frequency, we can reduce the startup current, okay, and also we, we can able to save the energy, which power consumption, is a uh, you know decreases when we use the variable frequency types because based on the demand we can improve the speed if there is no demand then we can reduce the speed and we can run the motor at a constant speed also with the help of this variable frequency types so when we get into the variable frequency types it will have a converter it will have a dc link and it will have a inverter <clears throat> apart from it if you get depth into the variable frequency type, it has some of the most important components one is the it has a power circuit, okay, control circuit, okay, then heat sink and a power supply circuit. So, we, when we get into in depth of it, we have a rectifier module, we have a pre-charge circuit, we have a capacitor block, we have a braking circuit and last we have a IGBT module. <clears throat> so, what is the role of this rectifier module? This rectifier module, okay, uh, it will convert the AC to a pulsating DC. That is the important function of this rectifier module. And what is the purpose of this pre-charge circuit? This pre-charge circuit, it avoids the interest, interest 
current and allows the capacitors to charge slowly avoiding the capacitor getting damaged okay third thing is the capacitor block so this is also known as dc bus system because it consists of capacitors which are connected in series and the parallel combinations <clears throat> so okay, the main role of the rectifier is to create the pulsating dc okay and the capacitors and inductors they always work as a uh, lc filters in order to remove the ac components and it will produce a pure dc okay and uh, we have igbt modules inside the uh, vfds so igbt is nothing but the insulated gate bipolar transmitter okay transistor it has a high power three terminals okay most importantly for electronic fast switching operations we are using this igbt it is an advancement of uh, vjt and mosfets okay and uh, brake circuit so it is mainly the main use of the brake circuit is the safety purpose nowadays mostly in the advanced all the vfds we are having the inbuilt brake circuits uh, that, that is nothing but the braking resistors or sometimes mosfets as a switch we used to use in the brake circuit okay but for the high voltage variable frequency drive separately we need to provide the brake resistors and the mosfets as the switches so this uh, braking resistor has the following terminals it has positive and negative terminals okay which is often referred as a b1 or b2 or pa plus or pb minus okay next is a control circuit so in the control circuit we have a relay contacts we have a digital inputs and we have analog input and output modules also so all these say for example uh, if you want to uh, control or uh, making a switching operation we need to from the relay contact by by enabling the relay contact we can start and stop or sometimes uh, if you are monitoring something you need some indications you need some uh, inputs from the plc's then we can use the digital input circuits and as i told earlier through the help of this control circuit we can able to control and produce the required voltage or a current to operate the load most importantly uh, it can be a plc module okay it can be analog input or analog output module most importantly okay um, it will be the part of a plc from there with the help of those analog modules we are going to control the motor speeds so as we get into in depth we have a uh, digital input modules okay and uh, digital output modules next uh, analog input modules analog output modules okay and we have a uh, relays and we have a uh, communication port for the vfds to communicate and most importantly uh, for the analog input and output okay so we we are using 0 to 10 volt or 4 to 20 milliamps based on our requirement okay it will be either going to the potentiometer or it will be going to the plc analog ports okay in the same way for the analog output also okay we will be having uh, 0 to 10 volt availability or 4 to 20 milliamps for controlling the external applications and uh, if you get into the relay we will have a normal relay we have a normally open and normally close based on our requirement we can use the concert relays okay so next we are having the hmi screen so in that screen we can able to watch uh, whatever um, things that you are changing in the in our uh, in the button which is present in the vft so we can able to uh, see what will be the frequency what will be the current and what will be the uh, startup current and what will be the you know uh, limitations okay uh, start limit and uh, end limit everything we can set in the vfds and uh, with the help of this keyboard we can able to operate and we can see everything in the uh, hmi screens okay which is present in the vfds next is the filter so this input line reactor it reduces the harmonic associated with the ac drives that is the important function of these filters okay in most of the all the installation we used to recommend these filters okay and heat sink the main usage of heat sink is to uh, dissipate the heat efficiently from the rectifiers and from the igbt modules okay so in, for those two electronic equipments we are often using these heat sinks okay we have a back channel cooling we have a no air over electronic cooling and we have a panel through cooling also for the cooling purpose normally we used to use the fans 
so now we are going to see some of the troubleshooting tips first and foremost thing is that uh, in the vfd we will all often face a problem called high temperature okay what will be the cause of this high temperature because there is a possibility for a cooling fan to get faulty and we have a choked air filters there is a possibility for dirty heat sinks and faulty temperature sensors and what is the action that we are going to perform using this uh, uh, what is the action that we need to take in order to resolve this issue first and foremost is that we need to check whether the fan is rotating or not if not check the fan power supply if the fan supply is okay then replace the fan okay and uh, check uh, the air filters are cleaned or not if not replace the filters and check the heat sink okay with the approved solvent uh, and clean them try to clean them okay and if there is any faulty temperature sensor try to replace it so these might be the problems most importantly most of the problem for the high temperatures and if the issue is not yet resolved after doing all these actions then it is better to cancel the technical person you know for in order to resolve the problem next thing is that if we have a under voltage problem okay what will be the cause uh, there will be a less dc bus voltage or there there is a possibility for the phase losses also the first and the foremost thing that we need to do, check the dc bus voltage okay if it is above 600 volt say for example for 440 volt okay um, conditions okay check is there any fuses got blown or not and check the faulty conductor or breaker in the missing phase at the input okay and check the capacitor banks uh, whether it is bulgy or is it leaking and when we perform all these uh, statistical checks then it is good okay after doing all these checks still the problem is existing it is better to go contact the technical persons okay next if you are facing any over voltage issue the cause for will be the breaking resistor faulty or a power surge okay what is the action that, then we need to check the breaking resistor and also we need to check the input power and the dc bus voltage and we need to perform the statistical checks also okay and most importantly we need to identify the mosfet and check uh, its uh, contact maker for the technical assistance next if you are facing any over current issue the cause will be the motor overload or a false alarm check the overload settings okay and measure the current manually if the problem is not yet resolved then it is better to contact the concerned technical persons for the assistance so when we get into the statistical checks what we, what we will do with the statistical check simple see you can see the picture here this is an example of a vft we are providing based on the manufacturer maybe the terminal locations everything will be different but the concept that we are going to use here is going to be same for all the sort of vfds that you are going to use in the industry so when we check the input section from where we are getting the power supply that is r s t maybe the no, no, in indications might be different but we need to know what is the input side in the input section side first by keeping the positive probe of a multimeter okay and uh, you know we need to keep uh, the multimeter in the voltage mode since we are measuring the voltages okay we need to keep the positive at the r and we need to keep our negative probe at the dc bus bar then we need to check the voltage if the uh, voltage ranges from 0.4 to 0.6 then the diode is healthy okay because diode is a very much important thing in the vft so we are going to check the healthiness of the diode if the if you measure the voltage between the r and the dc bus terminal if we are getting a reading from 0.4 to 0.6 then the uh, diode is healthy the same way we need to check between yes and the positive t and the positive and in the same way okay if you change the polarity if you reverse the polarity and check uh, you know the multimeter will show it is oil that is open okay if you get any sort of deviation from these readings then there is a problem with the diode say for example if the voltage uh, when you are measuring if it is not in the range of 0.4 to 0.6 if it is a more than that or if it is less than that then there is a issue with the diode and in the same way when you reverse the polarity and you are checking the reading if you are getting around uh, uh, you know open ol then it is okay if you are getting something else then there is a issue with the diode and in the same way okay we can sort the diode okay if we sort and check the diode okay if the diode voltage is less than 0.1 volt okay similarly for open diode so you are finding something that 
some diode got sorted. So in the sorted diode, the voltage will be less than 0.1 volt. This is an example of a sorted diode. Okay, here the voltage is less than the 0.1 voltage. Similarly, for the open diode, the reading will be OL. So by using this methodology, we can able is able to easily identify that uh, whether the diode is healthy or it got sorted. Okay, similar way in the output side also. Okay, along in the U, V, and W. Okay, we need to keep our positive probe, and on the DC bus terminal side, we need to keep the negative terminal. Then we need to check the voltage between these terminals. If we are getting in the range of 0.4 to 0.6, then the diode is healthy. If there is any deviation from it, then there is a possibility for the diodes which got sorted. And if you are um, getting OL is okay. If not, then the IGBT is faulty. Thank you so much. Please subscribe and press the bell icon. If you want to know more and learn more, you can contact us. We have provided the contact details here. And we are providing PLC uh, training for Siemens Allen Broadly uh, Delta PLCs. So if you are a triple E student or if you are an instrumentation student or if you are from easy department, then you can do this course and you can work in the core, core industry. Apart from it, uh, if you had a plan to work in the GCC countries like Qatar, Oman, Saudi, we are providing trainings in building management system and building automation control system. Then you can contact us. We have provided the contact details here. If the EV power is not available, then you want to establish um, a DC light system using a solar, then you can contact us. We are providing. And if you might have agriculture farms, you might get a uh, trouble from the animals. Okay. Uh, for your agriculture crops, then you can put the solar fencing instead of going for electrical fencing. Then uh, you, uh, there you can put the uh, solar fencing. We are providing solar fencing as a kit. And if you had a plan to put solar on grid, off grid, hybrid, solar streetlights, and solar pump uh, services, we are providing uh, design, installation, testing, and commissioning, consultancy, and training supports also. And if you had a plan, okay, to learn the basics of the electrical vehicles or access control system. Uh, or ship automation, then you can contact us. Uh, we have provided the contact details here. Thank you so much.